so yeah, um, neural networks is a universal function approximator. Do you guys still remember logistic regression? Thumbs up if, if you do. Who remembers logistic regression? Um, let's just call it random. Uh, hmm. I'm seeing Michelle Andrea Martinez. Um, how would you explain logistic regression at high level based on what we have discussed so far? What is logistic regression to you? It's okay if you don't know how to explain. So actually, um, there's an interesting relationship between linear, or sorry, logistic regression and um, neural networks. That's why I brought this up. So if you still remember, uh, it's basically a linear regression and then you apply um, a logistic function afterwards. So this is the linear regression equation. Then you just apply sigmoid or whatever activation function there is in neural network, but uh, it's sigmoid in the context of logistic regression. So you apply sigmoid to the output of linear regression and then what you're getting is uh, um, our probabilities. <clears throat> and then you just use an arbitrary threshold, say 0 0.5. If it's above that, then that's true or one. Else it's false or zero. So that's logistic regression. Yeah. So yeah, like what I've mentioned, um, your output is really a probability, quote, unquote. That's the output of logistic regression. But what if we do this? So this one is essentially um, a logistic regression model. If you go back, if you still remember, so we have different inputs. There's a node here. You're just adding them all up. Um, then, of course, you're multiplying the weights and then some bias and then the transformation. But it's basically one node. You have lots of inputs going to one node. You do all those operations. Let's say, for example, you have lots of nodes. <clears throat> so you have three nodes here. And then the output of those three nodes are going into another node. That's going to be your output. So, yeah, that's essentially a neural network. So you could think of it as stack logistic regressions. So if you understood linear regression and logistic regression properly, then um, in a very vanilla case, that's neural network. If you add like lots of nodes. You could think of um, your inputs as like size, number of bedrooms, or whatever features you could think of. Doesn't matter. Could be any other input because it's machine learning. And then you're predicting this Y. You could also remove some of the of the connections. That's also okay. So size and number of bedrooms could be um, like a family size. Yeah, and then the zip code um, could be used for the walkable or school quality feature. But basically, you just have these inputs and this model is trying to figure out what they could constitute to. So yeah, that is the vanilla example of neural networks. We call this a multi-layered perception. So you have inputs, you have this hidden layer. The one in between is the hidden layer, and then this is the output layer. So all the nodes between your output and then the input are hidden layers. We call this a two-layer network. We count the number of hidden layers. In this case, it is one, just this vertical layer that you can see here, and then the output. So that's two. You don't count the input. There could be n number of nodes with the hidden layers, up to you. There's no limit. So yeah, this is the input layer. Any ML task has this input. Then the hidden layers, um, they could 
present whatever concept you think of. The idea is you're just basically mapping the input to the output. In this case, we have three hidden neurons in this fully connected neural network. Then you have the output. Output could be a classification or regression. And then, of course, you have the weights, similar to linear and logistic regression. It's basically that. Remember the weights times the input, and then you apply the activation function for your logistic regression. Okay. <clears throat> activation function could be sigmoid, softmax, um, relu, and others. I'll show some of those later. But it should be non-linear. For the hidden layers, at least. Uh, let's get this part. So it's just some example. Uh, so why is it called neural networks? So what is a neuron to begin with? So you have a nucleus, dendrites, so body, and other uh, parts of the neuron. But um, it is being called a neural network because it is loosely patterned after the human brain or in neural networks, for example. You have your inputs here, and um, that that is the dendrite that you're seeing here, and then you have the, and then you just add them all up, and then the the activation function, or the weight, sorry, the weights here could be the myelin sheet here. That's the insulator that you have in your neurons, in your brain. So um, that basically determines how many electrons could pass through your, the, the neuron that you have. So that's what the weight does. And then, um, so basically it's just loosely patterned after the human brain or the neurons. That is why it's called neural networks. Although of course the actual um, neural, um, human brain is more complicated than that as expected. But this is a good enough um, simplification that we have regarding the human brain, and it works wonders. It, it could be so much. Sorry, I'm just going to um, open the door to my dog. Is there? Just wait for a second. OK, sorry for that. <laughs> anyway, where was I again? Yeah, um, neural networks um, is loosely pattern of the human brain. That's pretty much it. As I said, it's more complex than that. It's not really an accurate representation of the brain, but it's good enough. So how can we visualize neural network? This is simply a logistic regression equation. So you have lots of um, inputs. You just add them all up. This is the bias, this is W sub zero here. So this is your hidden layer, and then um, you add them. This is a computational graph representation of um, the logistic regression. It's longer, it's longer than what I've shown you guys, but it's the same thing. So we have broken it down to so many nodes, but um, all these nodes after this one, it's basically the whole sigmoid function. This, this whole one here. If you really want to break it down into smaller pieces, this is what's happening. You're multiplying the inputs, um, you're adding them, and then you add the bias, which is W0, and then you apply the sigmoid function. So you multiply, this is E raised to negative, and then the output of linear regression equation that you have. The, so yeah, just another way of representing it, but it's the same thing. This is it. They're both the same. 